This video is recorded in order to provide you with the technical knowledge and skills on how to prepare a box and whisker plot using Microsoft Excel. By the end of this video, you'll be able to understand the important elements which are used to prepare a box and whisker plot, and then you'll be able to know how to use Excel to produce a box and whisker plot, and finally, how to interpret and understand the findings of the box and whisker plot. The box and whisker plot is a graph that is used in order to show the center, spread, and skewness of observations in ungrouped quantitative data set. The box and whisker plot is a graph that is made up of a box with two whiskers. So graphically speaking, it is a graph that looks like this. Um, you have a box with two whiskers. So uh, this is my box, right? And we've got two whiskers, um, a left side whisker and a right side whisker. So these are the two whiskers. So it is a graph that looks like, like, like this. Now, what are the important statistical elements that are needed in order to graph a box and whisker block? Well, let's focus first of all on the box. The left side of the box is represented by the value of the first quartile or it's Q1. But the right side of the box is represented by the value of the third quartile or Q3. How about the middle value of the box? It is represented by the value of the median. We've got two whiskers, a left side whisker and a right side whisker. The left side whisker is represented by the smallest value in the data set between the two inner fences. So it is the smallest value in the data set between the two inner fences. But the right side whisker is represented by the largest value, the largest value in the data set between the two inner fences. Why it is important to graph a box and whisker blot? Well, this plot is very important in detecting outliers, and outliers are extreme values, very, very large values, or very, very small values in comparison to the majority of observations in a data set. So now we understand the elements and the five significant components of the box and whisker plot and how it looks like. Now let's move to the second objective and I'm gonna show you how to prepare a box and whisker plot within a few clicks on Microsoft Excel. This data set represents ungrouped quantitative data sets on the number of hours spent on social media applications by a group of people in a specific week. Well, the first respondent spent 20 hours, the second 15 hours, the third 14 hours, and so on. We want to prepare a box and whisker block. But before we do that, let's find the values here. And we will start by finding the minimum value or the smallest value in this ungrouped data set, and then the value of the first quartile or Q1 value of the median. Q3 and maximum values. Now, in Excel, we will be using the functions, the stored functions, and to do so, to do so, I want to find the minimum value. I'm going to put the cursor where I want to produce produce the value. Hit equal. In other words, I'm trying to tell Excel to perform a statistical function. What is the function? I want you Excel to find the quartiles, and once you type Q. The function will appear, it is the second one, quartile dot inclusive. 
and then double click on the function and then it asks you to choose a specific array or x values and these are the x values that i want to uh, i want to i want to include in my you know uh, analysis and then what i need to do i need to type a comma and then you will see the five significant elements including minimum first quartile median third quartile maximum in this cell i want to produce the or i want to find the minimum value that means i'm going to put here zero now i don't want to repeat you know the same um, function on the other four significant values and therefore i want to use the absolute and relative values by clicking on f4 in order to you know freeze the array so i'm gonna click f4 and then i'm gonna now hit enter now the minimum value in this data set is eight and now i will put the cursor here till i see the black plus sign and then drag that means i am duplicating the function but i need now to adjust the selection within the function and this cell i'm gonna find the first quartile so i'm gonna remove zero and replace it with one which is the value of the first quartile and then i'm gonna do the same thing here i'm gonna replace the zero with two which is the value of the medium and then i'm gonna hit enter again i'm gonna adjust this and then change the zero convert it into three which is the value of the third quartile and hit enter and finally the maximum value is i'm going to remove the zero replace it with four in order to find the maximum value and hit enter now let's understand what an interpret what we found here eight is the lowest value the person who responded and said he or she spent eight hours on social media applications on a specific week now the first quartile or q1 is 14 and this means that 25 percent of the respondents spend 14 hours or less on social media applications on a specific week and 75 percent of the respondents spend 14 hours or more on social media applications on a specific week. How about the value of the median, which is 18? It is the value in the middle term of a ranked data set. And that means 50% of the respondents in this data set spend 18 hours or less on social media applications on a specific week. And 50% of the respondents spend 18 hours or more on social media applications on a specific week. How about this value q3 or the third quartile it means that 75 percent of the respondents spend 26 hours or less on social media applications on a specific week and 25 percent of the respondents spend 26 hours or more on social media applications on a specific week and the largest value in this data set is 60. So Excel is doing a fantastic job, is ranking the observations and then finding the values of the first quartile, median, third quartile. OK, now we want to find in this cell the lower inner fence and the value of the lower inner fence is Q1 or first quartile minus 1.5 times the inter quartile range. This means that we have to find here the IQR, which is the inter quartile range. And the inter quartile range is the third quartile minus the first quartile. So I'm going to put the cursor here, hit equal, and then subtract the value of Q3, 26 minus the value of Q1, and then put the result here. So the inter quartile range is 12 hours. Now the lower inner fence is the first quartile minus the IQR times 1.5. And I want to put this as a function. So I'm going to tell Excel to perform a function by hitting equal. And then 
I'm going to choose the value of the first quartile and then subtract 1.5 times the interquartile range, which is 12, and then put the result here. And the result is negative 4. How about the upper inner fence? The upper inner fence is Q3 plus 1.5 times again the interquartile range. So I'm going to hit equal and then choose the value of the third quartile, 26, and then add to this value 1.5 times the interquartile range, which is 12, and then hit equal. These are the inner fences. How about the outer fences? Well, the lower outer fence is the value of the first quartile minus three times the interquartile range. So again, I'm going to hit equal and then choose the value of the first quartile and then subtract three times the interquartile range, which is 12. And if I want to find the last element, which is the upper outer fence, I'm going to say it is the third quartile plus the three times the interquartile range. So I'm going to hit equal till Excel to perform a function. What is the function? I'm going to choose Q3, which is a 26 plus, and then I open parenthesis three times the interquartile range, which is 12 in this case, and then I hit enter, and the value is 60, 62. Okay, now it's time to graph, and the nice thing, and this is what I want to achieve here on Excel, within a few clicks, I'll be able to graph the books and whisker blot. What I am supposed to do is to start by, you know, selecting the X values, the observations and the data set, and then please click on the insert cap, and then you see this arrow, insert statistic chart, click on the arrow, and then choose this graph, which is represented by the box and whisker blot. Of course, you can choose any design uh, you wish to choose at the end. The format and design issues are artistic issues and they are related to the designer. Uh, I'm going to focus on the statistical uh, part. Uh, I can change the title and call this books, books and whisker lot. And now let's see if what we found here reflect what is available on the box and whisker blot. Now, if you look to the box and whisker blot, uh, this line represents the smallest value. And if you look to the line here between the two inner fences, it's, it's uh, you can say somehow it's, it's eight. So because we know that the uh, lower inner fence is negative four and the upper inner fence is 44 and eight is the smallest value in this data set between the two inner fences. Now, let's have a look to the box here. The lower side of the box represents the value of the first quartile and Q1 here is 14 hours. And if you look to the line here, this line is 14. And then if you look to the line in the middle, which represents the value of the median, we found that the median here is 18 and the line here is 18 under 20. And if you look to the upper side of the box, it represents the third quartile, which is 26. And in this case, if I'm going to just double check this value, this value is a 20, 26. OK, how about the upper whisker? The upper whisker is basically the largest value between the um, two inner fences and it is somehow I can say it is 36 which is between negative negative 4 and 44. How about this dot? This is the maximum value 60. Well this is an outlier. It's basically a, an extreme value or a very very large value how can we know that it is an outlier? Because 60 is outside the range that is from negative 4 to 44, the inner fences. That means this is an outlier. Now, there are two types of outliers, mild outlier or moderate outlier, and the other type is the extreme outlier. This outlier, indeed, let me highlight it with yellow, is a mild outlier because it is outside 
the two inner fences, 60 is greater than 44, but it is within the outer fences, 60 is less than 62. That's why it is a mild outlier. But if this value was something that is greater than 62, in this case, we can say this is an extreme outlier. But this is not the case in this example. So this is the box and whisker blot. And this is how we interpret the box and whisker blot and detect outliers or extreme values using the box and whisker blot. Thank you very much for watching the video. And in order to disseminate knowledge, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much.